Even after finishing the main story, there are some very strong items you can get for Sora, Donald and Goofy. In this video, we'll explain how to unlock and craft the best shield and staff in the game, as well as show you how to beat the secret boss Dark Inferno, who gives you an amazing item when you beat him. This is Dennis standing in for your raptor to talk about the best items you can get near the end of the game. We won't discuss the three special keyblades as we want to focus on other amazing items you can get first. Since we'll talk about things you can do after finishing the game or nearly finishing the game, there might be some location spoilers, although we won't be sharing any story related spoilers. If you want to go into the ending blind, consider this your warning for the rest of the video. As per usual, a like would be super appreciated and let's go! So first up, let's look at the best weapons for Goofy and Donald. You'll find that just like with the other titles in the series, the best weapons for your companions are the Save the King shield for Goofy and the Save the Queen staff for Donald. You're gonna need to find a lot of materials in order to even unlock the recipe, but if you've been doing enough fights on your way through the story, you should have quite a few materials already unlocked. The prerequisite for unlocking the crafting recipes for Save the King and Save the Queen is to find 55 different crafting materials. Most of these can be found just by killing Heartless but some of them are tricky and require a bit more effort. One of the materials you'll definitely want to grab is Orichalcum. Not only is it a rare material that you'll need to fill up your list, you'll also need two pieces to craft the actual weapons themselves. It can be found as a rare drop from shooting asteroids with your gummy ship, but the easiest way to do this is to go to Sandbar Isle in the Pirates of the Caribbean world and open up the chests underwater, like we discussed in our previous video. Next we'll need to gather some different crystals. These are the rarest kind of materials and only drop from some very specific Heartless. For instance, the Pulsing Crystal you'll need for Save the King can sometimes be dropped by the large bodied Heartless that you can find in almost any world. A good spot to farm them is in the Frozen world, right next to the Treescape save point. Don't forget to equip the favorite Deputy. It has Lucky Strike as an ability, which makes enemies drop items more often. The easiest way to get crystals is to craft them, however. The Synthesis recipe requires you to collect some lesser materials of the same type, so pulsing shards, stones and gems if you want to make a pulsing crystal. You'll also need a wellspring crystal, which we'll get to in a second. The same principle applies to most of the other materials needed, with the exception of orichalcum. For a full list of materials and where to get them, we've left a useful site in the description, so totally check that out. Regardless of whether you want to make the best weapons for Goofy and Donald, wellspring crystals are definitely an item you want to collect. Get as many of these as possible, as they are used in many synthesis recipes and are also used to upgrade your Keyblade to the maximum level. Wellspring Crystals drop from Heartless, but only from some very specific kinds. The easiest way to farm them is to head towards Battle Gate 12 in San Francisco, located on the top of the skyscraper right next to the North District save point. Battle Gates are repeatable combat encounters that reward you an item and a secret report upon your first completion which makes them excellent farming spots if you're looking for a particular kind of enemy, or in this case, material. Keep in mind that they only unlock after reaching the second save point in the Keyblade Graveyard. Fight your way through the waves of Heartless and keep an eye on the armored ones. Chances are some of them are going to drop a Wellspring Crystal. Since they're easily farmed at this location and you get at least a couple while completing the battle gate, repeating it once or twice should net you enough Wellspring Crystals. If you're really impatient, try equipping the favorite deputy again for some more item drops. Some of the enemies in this battle gate also drop blazing and lightning crystals, both of which are needed for Save the King. When you've finally gathered all the materials you need, there is one other thing to keep in mind before crafting the best weapons for Goofy and Donald. Both Save the King and Save the Queen have a plus version, the recipes for which are unlocked after finding 58 different synthesis materials, alongside the recipe for the Ultima Key. These add or upgrade one of the skills of the weapon. Both weapons and their upgraded variants have access to Damage Siphon, which restores MP when taking damage. For the regular version of Save the Queen, Donald gains MP Hastera, which allows him to recover his MP more quickly when he runs out. Upgrade it to the plus version and you gain Magic Hastega, which is a straight upgrade to MP Hastera and makes your MP recharge even quicker. Goofy gains Stun Protection in addition to Damage Siphon, which makes him immune to being stunned. Both of these upgraded versions can be crafted with the exact same materials as the regular versions, but they need one additional material, a Hungry Crystal. The easiest and surest way to obtain Hungry Crystals is by completing Synthesis Challenges. There are two easy challenges that reward you with a Hungry Crystal. The first one can be completed by collecting 500 Synthesis Materials. By farming the other items you need for Save the King and Save the Queen, you are also working towards that goal. The second challenge that rewards you with a Hungry Crystal is to collect all different materials of the third tier, so the ones whose names end with gem. If you visit the Moogle shop after collecting these, you will be awarded with two Hungry Crystals. 
Now whether you want to craft the regular or plus versions is up to you. I recommend the upgraded versions, since they give you two amazing skills and you only need to get two hungry crystals to synthesize them, which is little effort compared to the rest of the work you've already done. If you have a problem finding 58 different synthesis materials though, you might want to get the regular save the king and save the queen first. You can craft both multiple times on one playthrough, since none of the materials are finite, so having both is also an option. Now that we have equipped Donald and Goofy with their best weapons, it's time to get something special for Sora. The Crystal Regalia gives you 5 points in strength and magic, 16 extra ability points and the ability MP Hastega, which cuts your MP recharge time by 30%. This makes it viable for almost every player and one of the strongest accessories in the game. It's not easy to get though, as it is guarded by arguably the strongest boss in the game, the Dark Inferno. You can find him in the Keyblade Graveyard, where his battle gate can be found close to the Trials of Valediction save point. Dark Inferno hits hard and fast, has a very large health bar and becomes progressively more aggressive during the three phases of the fight. His moveset isn't very diverse though, so with the right preparation you'll be able to pull through, so let's take him on. First up, preparations. Of course you want to equip your best Keyblades and upgrade them as far as possible. Tips for that can be found in our previous Kingdom Hearts video on how to quickly upgrade your Keyblades early in the game. I found myself using the Wheel of Fate because of its high damage and strong moveset. All abilities that increase your survivability are good picks here, but some are nearly essential if you want to beat the boss. Equip as many damage control abilities as possible to minimize damage when you get to low health. Leaf Bracer to make sure your healing goes uninterrupted and Second Chance and Withstand combo to make sure you survive his flurry of melee attacks. Block Replenisher is also amazing here, as we'll be blocking his attacks a lot and the faster we get our MP back, the more we can heal ourselves. Stock up on potions, elixirs or others, whichever one you favor, and equip your best items and accessories. Don't be afraid to borrow some from Goofy and Donald, as they won't be joining you for the fight. That's right, all that hard work for two amazing weapons and we can't even use them against the hardest boss in the game. This also means you won't have anyone to heal you when you get low, so keep a close eye on your MP and HP during the entire fight. Now for the boss itself, Dark Inferno has 5 moves and 3 phases. The moves don't differ from face to face, but they will succeed each other much more quickly as the fight progresses. When you first encounter the Dark Inferno, he appears as a pitch black heartless with two massive swords and a fiery crown. Hit him enough and he turns purple, indicating that the second phase has begun. He will begin to chain his attacks together much quicker, giving you less space to damage and stagger him. The final phase sees him turning red, making him even quicker and pushing Sora to almost always stay on the defensive. Staying on the defensive is generally key in the entire boss fight, as most of his attacks leave an opening for you after he's finished or when you are able to counter him. His most common move and probably the first one you'll see is a sidewards leap he uses to close in on you, after which he releases a flurry of attacks. Blocking the first hit and immediately countering tends to work best, as you stun him out of his combo most of the time. Finish one combo and back up again, as you'll see him raise his blades in a second. This guard mode is his second attack, and is aimed at players who stay on the offensive too much. No matter how often you hit him, Dark Inferno will break out of your combo and attempt to block your next attack, delivering a devastating counter combo should you choose to strike. Like mentioned before, one full combo seems to be the safest way to deal damage without the risk of a counter attack hitting you. His third attack is a variation on his first, but instead of leaping towards you and attacking, he just starts slashing whilst moving towards you in a straight line. Blocking and countering is once again the way to go, although it is a little harder to stun him out of his combo. Still, careful blocking and or dodging will allow you to survive this move with little to no damage taken. His fourth move is a giant AoE attack in which he summons a circle of spinning swords that can stun Sora if they hit him. Jumping as soon as he charges this attack will allow you to easily dodge it. Close in with him quick enough and you'll be able to land a combo on him as he recovers, but stay careful. On later phases he will almost immediately go into one of his two melee combos, which leaves you vulnerable if you choose to attack him then. His last move starts out very similar, but instead of a circle of swords, he shoots dark flaming orbs outward in a circle. These orbs gather around Sora and start following him around. After a little while, the orbs will chase Sora directly and will try to hit him and damage him. The easiest way to avoid this is to simply jump up as high as possible and keep flying in circles. This works amazing during the first phase, but especially in the last phase, Dark Inferno seems keen to toss in one of his melee combos on top of this attack, making it very hard to dodge. Just weather the storm and heal as soon as you can when you get hit. Withstand combo and second chance should keep you safe. One last thing to keep track of during this boss fight are your form changes. 
Since form changing gives you invulnerability during the animation, you can use it to break out of combos. It's also useful if you need one or two more seconds for your mana to recharge or to nullify the damage of Dark Inferno's counter after he blocks you. The same goes for finish commands, grand magics and rage mode, so make sure to keep an eye on your cooldowns and timers. This is all the advice you'll need for a fighting chance against Dark Inferno, so give it your all and take him down. And there you go! Those are the best weapons you can get for Goofy and Donald, as well as an amazing item for Sora that you can get after finishing the game. Subscribe for more Kingdom Hearts videos, you can check out our guide on how to quickly upgrade your Keyblades early in the game by clicking the video on screen, as well as much more videos on the channel. Leave a like if you liked the video, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!